Okay. <clears throat> So that's how you estimate the, uh, the PW. And of course, uh, once you've estimated it, what you do is you stick it into your probability ranking principle, which says, well, we're going to rank using the following ratio, right? So uh, the ratio over the words in the documents, PW, that's your relevance model, divided by QW, the background model that we computed from the entire uh, corpus. Uh, so that's straightforward. Uh, it turns out that there is a bit of a problem with this. And the problem is that this tends to prefer uh, this ranking function is going to end up preferring wrong types of documents. So one way to see that is ask yourself the question, for this ranking function, what is going to be the perfect document? Right? Uh, and, uh, and of course, that depends on document length. So you could assume that out of, all, um, out of all documents of a fixed length, which document would get the highest score? What is the perfect document for that ranking function? And you should be able to convince yourself that uh, this is maximized when you have a document consisting of a single uh, killer feature, so to speak, or a single word that is most discriminative. So if you pick a word W, which has the maximum ratio between PW and QW, right, and repeat that word D times, the number of times the, 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 where D is the document length, right, uh, that is going to give you a higher score than any other document in the collection. So what this ranking function is going to do is it's going to prefer documents with few highly discriminative uh, terms. Right? And that, of course, is not very desirable. So it turns out that a better way to measure uh, similarities is using uh, KL divergence. Right? So uh, here, PW is your relevance model. That's the expected distribution of words in the relevant documents. Uh, Theta D is the little distribution that corresponds to an individual document, just based on the frequencies smoothed out. And if you do the KL divergence between them, um, uh, that empirically works better as a ranking function uh, compared to that. Uh, what that means as far as optimality of the probability ranking principle is interesting. So it's, it's not really clear what that means. Um, <clears throat> So, uh, but in this case, of course, you wouldn't have the same problem. Uh, the optimal document would be the document that approximates the distribution of words in the relevance model as accurately as possible. So it wouldn't be a document with a single highly discriminative term. It would be a document with roughly correct proportions of words, uh, the same proportions of words as the relevance model had, your PW. Okay. Right. Uh, and I guess as a, uh, as a parting shot, so, uh, the basic model is just PW. It turns out that if you regularize PW, if you interpolate it with the frequencies of words in the original query, uh, that ends up giving you slightly better performance than just the, than just PW by itself. Right? So this is just an empirical, uh, this is just an empirical observation. And if you do that, right, and you rank by this formula, uh, you get something called RM3, and that's one of the best performing uh, retrieval algorithms, uh, sort of. Um, out of the box. So if you don't if you don't use page rank, if you don't use anchor text, if you don't use web features, if you just have a corpus and a query, then it turns out that one of the best ways you can rank documents is this RM3, which is a combination of this form and that ranking function. <clears throat> All right. So uh, so let's summarize. Uh, the reason we started doing this is we wanted to estimate. PW, so that's the probability of a word uh, in the relevant documents, but we don't have any training examples. So uh, the big assumptions that we made is, is we said, we want to estimate this guy. We're going to approximate it as a conditional probability of seeing that word from some distribution, assuming that I've just sampled the query from it. So that's the sampling game. Um, then we need to estimate the joint, and we did that through the Definetti theorem. So we assumed that the words are exchangeable. The order of them doesn't matter, and that allowed us to have a particular form for it. And then the only thing that we have to do is we have to set a density function. And we said that it's going to be uniform over the types of urns that we see in our data, the documents. Um, and if you do that, you get, uh, you get, uh, you get a system that's really good for, uh, for basic retrieval. It also has really nice results for uh, things like image annotation or handwriting, uh, handwriting retrieval. OK, so I'm going to stop here. Any questions? Are we ignoring Q completely? Um, well, yes, you're right. Q is not, uh, well, you mean Q the query or Q the background model? Q the background model. OK, yes, we are. Okay. Uh, we're not ignoring it. We're not ignoring it totally, totally, completely. And the reason for that is, 
right there, right? No, sorry. Yeah, right there. So the little urn models for each document, it's the frequencies that come from the document interpolated with QW, with the, with the background frequencies. So they're embedded in there. Uh, but that's the, only, uh, that's the only place where they occur, yes. So you don't have QW explicitly uh, anymore. Um, and if that, is, if that is terribly concerning, then um, I guess one way to think about it is uh, the way we estimated QW is we use the whole collection anyway. Right? We didn't have any examples of non-relevant documents. If we did, it would be a waste to throw it away. But uh, we took an approximation anyway. 